Just like the rest of the muscles in our body, our brains need a good workout every now and then to stay healthy and sharp. And an easy and enjoyable way to do this is to pick up a book. Reading is an inexpensive and highly impactful activity that you can add to your life to see incredible benefits. One study done by Sussex University actually found that reading can reduce stress by 68%. And research also found that those who read fiction books are more likely to become empathetic humans because we're able to connect and relate to others easier. Dr. Seuss once wrote, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you will go. Hi friends, if you're new here, my name is Megan Young. I'm a recreation therapist and I'm here to help you find your flow and flourish. On this channel, we talk about all things holistic well-being and the small steps that you can take today to feel better. Going into 2021 right now, it's a time to set some goals and look forward to some of the new habits that you're going to acquire this year. Something that I did last year was I really wanted to read more. So what I did was at the beginning of 2020, I curated my 2020 reading list. And although I didn't make it through all the books on the list, I read so many more books than I typically would have. So I thought going into 2021 that I would share this tactic with you all. So in this video, I'm gonna break down step-by-step step how I created my 2021 reading list. And I'm gonna share a few of the books that I read last year that were highly impactful in my life and a few of the books that I've chosen to read this year. Before we get going, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you're the first to get notified when a new video goes up. And if you like the content, give it a big thumbs up. Without waiting any longer, let's get into the good stuff. Define your reading goals. Are you hoping to use reading as a way to escape from the stressors of everyday life, using it as a healthy coping mechanism? Are you hoping to dive deeper into topics that interest and excite you? Or maybe you're needing to develop a new specific skill set in order to tackle a new project or job. By being able to identify what your goals are for reading this year, it's going to help you select which books to add to your list. At this stage of my life, I really enjoy reading nonfiction. Um, I've read a lot of fiction in the past and thoroughly enjoyed it, but right now what really interests me is research and real life stories. I kind of dark road a little bit, but it's what I like. So that's what my books have been based around this year. Your list does not need to be all nonfiction. I love fiction. It's so good for you know increasing enjoyment levels, reducing stress, and you can learn a lot from fiction as well. So whatever your goals are, make sure that you list them. You can try this technique to help you define your goals. Look into the future this time next year and think about who you want to be and where you want to be in your life. If you've done some goal setting for the year, then maybe go and look at those goals and think, okay, what topics could I learn about and dive deeper into that would help support my goals and dreams? My suggestion is to pick three or four main themes or goals for your reading list and then start to build and pick books off of those three or four themes. I'll share mine as an example. I want to deepen my spirituality and become a more mindful and connected person. I want to increase my productivity and organization skills by working smarter, not harder. I want to grow my entrepreneurial and business related skills. And I also just want to continue to expand my knowledge in the areas of health and well-being. Now that you know what your reading goals are for the year, we get to do the fun part. We're going to curate our list. There are so many blogs and YouTube videos out there right now that talk about different uh, subjects and the best, you know, the top 10 best books in that area. So something that I did when I was creating my list is because one of my goals is mindfulness and learning more about being present in the moment, I searched top 10 mindfulness based books. And so, so many things came up in the search and it was super helpful. I also use a site called Goodreads, which is a book lover community of reading enthusiasts who enjoy sharing their opinion on books. So you can go and read some reviews to help you narrow down which books you're gonna select. I'd like to emphasize for this step that you need to take it seriously and actually pour some time into it because you wanna feel excited and passionate about the books you select. You want to be, you know, once you finish one, you want to be ready to move on to the next because you found a book that truly aligns with your goals, your dreams, and you just can't wait to pick it up. You need that motivation to keep the reading list going throughout the year. And by doing this work on the front end, then as the months go on and life gets busy and kind of hectic, you won't have to do all of this research. You'll have your beautiful curated list ready to look at as soon as you're ready to move on to the next book. Make a reading plan. Where will you be getting your books from? Are you going to order them off of Amazon? Are you going to go to your favorite local bookstore? Are you going to rent them from the library? 
However you decide to get your books, make a plan ahead of time so that you'll have it ready to go when you're ready to move on to the next one. When will you be reading and where? Are you a morning reader that you can sit down with your cup of joe before the day gets going? Or did you want to use it at the end of the night as a way to kind of calm down and start your bedtime routine? Think about specifically when in your day you're going to do your reading and where it's going to be. It's, it will help troubleshoot any of the blocks that get in the way from you and actually sitting down and reading your book. And truly think through how much reading is realistic in your life. Maybe you are a super avid reader and reading for you is one of your preferred leisure activities. So you, you know that you'll be able to get through the books on a regular schedule. But maybe you're like me and reading has not always been your favorite activity in life and maybe you even struggled with reading when you were a kiddo. Think through what is realistic for your life. So maybe that's only 10 minutes a day. Maybe it's 30 minutes over the weekend. Think about how many books you'll realistically get through the year so that you're setting yourself up for success. My first book recommendation, um, I didn't technically read this in 2020. I think I read it for the first time in 2017, but You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero is, I think that this is the first kind of sort of like self-helpy personal growth book I read and it changed my life. I've read it, I think I've read it three times since. Jen does a really good job of making self-help and personal development easy fun to understand, actually something that makes sense in your mind. When I found this book, I was going through a really difficult period of my life and I had a lot of negative self-talk going on in my mind. And this book just put, it just put things into perspective and I absolutely love it and I recommend it to anybody. And I'll probably read it again because I love it so, so much. All right, book number two, and I definitely read this in 2020 is Super Attractor by Gabrielle Bernstein. Uh, if you are interested in learning about manifestation and the law of attraction, this book does a fantastic job of breaking down, breaking that down into super understandable and relatable ways. It's also just a really good book for like emotion regulation and being able to identify emotions and how you're feeling. Um, I've, I've Again, I've made so many notes in this book and I there's certain pages that I flag because if I'm having a hard day and I need some help getting myself back into a more um, stable, positive mood, then I will flip open this book. So highly recommend it. And last but not least, Atomic Habits by James Clear. This, this is like the mini Bible for developing new healthy habits and doing it in a way that is super attainable. If you ever struggled with setting a goal and having the best of attentions for achieving that goal, but then life got in the way and you weren't for whatever, at the end of the day, you just weren't able to achieve it. And it was just like a super frustrating um, experience for you. Then I recommend this book because as humans, you know, it, it's, it's really difficult for us to develop new habits, but this is the, the science and how you develop habits. And again, in like super practical terms that anybody can understand with really good stories woven in to help make it, to paint the picture for how it's gonna actually change your life. Um, yeah, this book I totally credit for my physical activity, for my healthy eating, for my, you know, taking supplements, for my work habits. I totally recommend this. And I, again, will probably read it for a second time this year if I have the time. My first pick for 2021 is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. The Power of Now is a spiritual self-help guide to help us discover our true being, release our pain and find deep inner peace. So again, one of my big goals this year is mindfulness and learning more about spirituality, law of attraction, all that very interesting stuff. And this is really, like on every list I looked at, this was the top recommendation for learning about this topic. So it's on my list. My next pick is Deep Work by Cal Newport. Deep Work is an indispensable guide to anyone seeking focused success in a distracted world. We all know that the world we live in is highly distractible. We have social media that's always just one click away. We have emails coming at us. We have lots of people asking things from us and it, it all gets in the way of us being able to truly focus and get the deep work done. 
So I, I've seen this book a few times recommended on um, like productivity type lists and it, it's just something that really interests me because I've always been a highly distractible person and I think if there is a science and there's ways that you can learn to be more focused and get more done in a shorter amount of time, then you, you're able to enjoy the rest of your life and do all of the really fun things that you like doing when the work is done. My third pick is The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Health. Many of the defining moments in our lives are the result of an accident or luck, but why would we leave our most meaningful, memorable moments to chance when we can create them? Something that was a really big resounding lesson for a lot of us this year in 2020 is that life is short and we are not guaranteed tomorrow. I think at the end of the day, the things that really, really matter in our lives are those super memorable experiences that we have with friends and family, or maybe something that we've achieved that we've worked really hard to do. And this book is all about how we can curate more of those moments in our life. Again, I've seen this book on so many lists and I've been really interested in reading it. I think it's really interesting too, and I think that I would support my work as a recreation therapist where I'm often creating events and places where memories are being made for everybody that I'm serving. And if I can find ways that you can make them more memorable and, and really influence someone's life, then I'm all in, sign me up. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create your 2021 reading list. Comment below and let me know one book that you plan on reading this year. I would love some recommendations. If you'd like to see the resources and the research for this video, you can check them out in the description below. And if you like the content, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and you can even share it if you'd like. Until next time, remember to take time to take care of yourself and I will see you all later. Bye.